Hi, welcome to The Peaceful Home. Today is Flippin' Friday, and I am joining a collaboration with Jamie over at Border Bananas. She also has a second channel, Border Bananas DIY, and both channels are amazing. I will put the links down below so you can check those out. She does thrift hauls and flip projects that are awesome. Um, there will also be a playlist down there of all the collaborators that have posted videos today. This video has taken me three days to film. And I have to admit, a few of these projects have been some of my favorites ever. I'm going to show you a really quick thrift haul and then three of the projects that I worked on. And um, I am especially excited about this stoneware project. Really easy to duplicate at home and I think you're gonna love it. I just hit 500 subscribers on YouTube. And that is quite an exciting milestone for me. And I just wanted to thank all of you who have subscribed and just encouraged me along the way. I appreciate it so much. And that means now it's time for a giveaway. And I'm going to do this through Instagram. So if you are not currently following me, head over to Instagram and look me up, Teresa Elling Peaceful Home. I do have an old account with just my name, so make sure that you look for Peaceful Home attached to that. And if you will follow me, you will see my announcement on Monday for the giveaway and you'll be able to enter. You won't want to miss it. Now, let's go to three days ago and start with my thrift haul. Hi, and welcome to the Peaceful Home. You may have come over from the playlist from Border Bananas. Today is Flippin' Friday, and I'm so excited to show you my thrift haul and how I'm going to flip a couple of these items for my home. If you are new here, I'm Teresa Elling, and I'm a professional organizer, parenting coach, wife and homeschool mom to six graduated kids. All of this haul came from a yard sale. And I also, on my way home from there, popped into an antique store. I'll show you what I got there as well. But some wonderful finds. So I'll start with this basket, which is just beautiful. It's in perfect shape, not a single piece broken. And I think I'm going to use it as a trash can. I am gathering things for my office redo. But also, this would be really cute, tipped upside down as a plant stand. So just beautiful. And then I got a few baskets yesterday. Um, here's another one, and I am doing a collection for possibly a basket wall, so I thought this would be a good one, as well as this little guy here. Um, we'll see once I put all these things up, but when you can grab a basket for 50 cents, a dollar, you can collect a few, and if there's one that doesn't really fit, you can just redonate, and you're really not out any money. Next is this little horse, and obviously he was an ornament. I got him to put in my kid's corner for my grandchildren, and I was going to cut off the wire and the string because he does sit and he's really cute, but I kind of like the way you can make him walk, so I might leave it on there. I'm not sure. I just thought he was really cute. I got this pot, and I'm not sure yet. I mean, after looking at it a second time, I really think it's beautiful the way it is. But my plan was to start collecting some pots like this in order to give them a new look. So we'll see if I do that today. I also found this little cutting board and uh, I love the color of the wood. I think I'll just take my sander to it, sand it really well on the edges and the top that has cut marks. But you wanna leave some of that in because it's a nice weathered, worn in look. Here's the one item I found at the thrift store. It's this little uh, oil painting. And I'm not exactly sure where this is gonna go. Sometimes you find a piece that you just love. This will find a place somewhere in my home because I love it that much. I do have a lot of gold in my bathroom, so that might be one spot, or possibly in the guest room. And then I thought this was a great find for the summer. Beautiful condition old, made of wood, not plastic, um, four badminton rackets. And now I need to get some birdies, but I think these will be really cute on my spring front porch as well as being able to actually use them. And then this little guy, he just needs some quick repairs that we'll probably do today. 
Um, the handle is a little sketchy, so I wouldn't want to have anything heavy in here, but I love the black and the rustic look of this, and I think this is going to be on my front porch as well. Since I am getting ready to finally turn my attention upstairs in this home, we've been here for three and a half years, now it's time to get a guest room done, my bedroom done, and my office. And I found this desk lamp. It's pretty weathered and worn, and I plan to repaint it. I'm not quite sure what color yet, um, but you'll know by the end of this video because I've got to make a decision quick. Last is my find of the day, and I can't pick it up and show it to you, but it's this chair. And again, in redoing my office, I don't love the look of office chairs, but I wasn't sure that I wanted a standard chair that wasn't on wheels. And I found this and it's beautiful. It's in great condition. I had to hit the springs and the, the twisting mechanism with a little WD-40 yesterday, but it works great. The only thing it needs are some new wheels. These are obviously not the original wheels and I think some good chunky black ones would look really great with this chair. I'm going to get to work using a couple of these things for my flips today, and then I'll show you my process and the end results. This is project number one, this little pot, and I'm going to do a technique that I've seen quite a bit on social media and on YouTube. A lot of people have tried many variations of getting pots to look like old stoneware. And the, the method that intrigues me the most is the dirt method. So we're gonna give that a try. First thing is to put on a coat of primer. So I'm going to do that first. Okay, I set it down and got the top part and I'm gonna let that dry just for maybe five or 10 minutes and then we're gonna put the next coat on. Now I'm going to do a coat of black and the Rust-Oleum 2X is my favorite spray paint. I love it. I use this um, Canyon Black Satin for a lot of projects. I love the satin because it's not too glossy, but it isn't completely matte either. Um, it doesn't really matter for this project. You pretty much can use whatever you want. Now I can set it down and get the top part. That looks pretty good. You don't have to worry about complete coverage because now comes the crazy part. I came out here because I've got some good dirt here. I don't know how it would work with sand and most of the property is sand because of the river, but I've got some good um, crushed granite dirt here and I'm going to try just spreading it on the container, rubbing it on. Now in this situation, it's actually scraping some of my black paint on, which is not how it looked on other people's tutorials. I think that actually this crushed granite is a little bit too sharp. So I am gonna grab um, some sand down at the beach. I'll be right back. On the way to the sand, I found some soil that looks really fine. So I'm gonna give this a try. Now right over the top of this, I'm going to spray another layer of paint. And another layer of dirt. This is sticking nicely. Definitely key to have your spray paint fresh and still wet. This looks awesome. Gonna start to rub it off a bit. And a third layer. More dirt. It's like when I was a little girl making mud pies. It's kind of fun. I'm really happy with this so far. 
I'm going to let it dry and then do just a final brushing off really lightly at the last bit of the dirt. And then I'm going to put a sealing coat on it. And I'm going to use the 2X uh, clear matte finish. Project number two is this black tray. And this isn't so much a flip as it is a repair. I want this to be really sturdy and it's got nails in the ends here and nails in wood over time will slide out. You really need a screw in wood to hold something tight and I can tell these nails are already pulling out so I want to replace them with screws. Also, this is made with just a veneer plywood and part of it has peeled off and has chipped and I want to repair that. I'm going to use some putty, some Bondo. Um, whip that up here, use it to fill the gaps and kind of glue the last bit down, replace with screws, and then this handle will be nice and sturdy. I put my gloves back on and I am definitely doing this outside. There are some things that you can do indoors, but not this. The fumes from this are, are pretty crazy. I'm just gonna tuck some of this underneath. Again, to act as a glue. I'll do both sides. Just lifting the edge back up and pushing some of this Bondo underneath. The great thing about this is that it can be stained or painted and really I don't want to change the look of this box very much so I'm just going to paint over it with some black and then distress it and it should look kind of like it was when I started. So I've got this on here. I'm just going to let it dry and then I'll be able to sand it down and paint it. While that's drying, I'm going to go ahead and pull the nails out. There's one. It's pretty rusty. It's very old. I keep all kinds of spare screws around and I usually find exactly what I need, including color. But the best screw for this is silver. So when I do the touch-up paint, I'll just hit the head of the screw with some black paint and you won't even see it. While this is drying, I'm going to move on to project number three. My original project was to flip this little desk lamp. Even though it's pretty old and tarnished, I decided I really like the way it looks and I don't want to change anything. So I'm not going to flip that. But the very next day after that thrift haul, I went to a yard sale and I got this lamp for $3. Now, um, <laughs> this is such a 90s throwback. It is actually speckled with pink, kind of a mint green and black. And it's very fine so that from a distance it doesn't look too bad, but if you come up close, uh, the color is um, pretty retro. I don't really care for the ridges and the lines in this, so I'm going to even that out with some joint compound. The joint compound is just going to fill in some of those ridges and give it a little more of a um, hand-thrown pottery look. You don't have to be too meticulous about this because I'm going to give it a light sanding before painting. The sun is setting on me, so I'm going to let this dry overnight, and in the morning, I will finish it off. Good morning. It's the next day. Uh, my projects are all dry. Starting with the box, I'm just going to give it a light sanding over the Bondo. I'm going to use the Waverly chalk paint in black 
and just one of these little disposable foam brushes and I'm just going to paint over the Bondo so that you can't see that wood filler. Once that dries, I will sand it just enough to distress it and try to make it look like the rest of the box. If you've ever worked with drywall, you know how easily this stuff sands down. It's really great, but I am going to wear a mask, which is nothing new these days, just so that I don't inhale all of this dust. Now this technique can be used on pottery, on glass. I've seen it done on just like dollar glass vases from a thrift store or bottles, um, jugs, really beautiful on glass. And then you don't need to prep the surface at all. And honestly, I'm not sure that I really needed to fill in these gaps. My paint might have done that for me, but I just wanted to be safe and get this layer of spackle on there. Now I'm going to paint. I'm using leftover house paint that I have from Bear in a white, and it really doesn't matter. You can choose any paint, and what you're going to do is add baking soda. I would say about a ratio paint to soda, two to one. So I've got this filled up here. I'm gonna add the baking soda, give it a stir. It's gonna thicken it right up. Kind of looks like pancake batter. The smoother your finish is, as in a glass vase, the more layers you may need to do. I may only need to do one or two on this. I'm just gonna start to paint it on. Don't have to be super neat about this. I'm going to put this in the sun to dry and then come back for a second coat. I'm actually going to add a little more baking soda, maybe more of a one-to-one -one ratio. And as I paint, I'm also going to stipple a little bit by um, just putting the brush straight on and kind of pounding and see if that adds to the texture. I've noticed that when this starts to dry partially, and then you go back in and you stipple or you cross hatch, which means kind of like X marks in the paint. Um, because it's dried partially, it just adds more texture. And we're building up layers that are thickening and I think it just looks amazing. I'm really happy with it. I don't think you can mess this project up. You just kind of keep messing with it until you like how it looks. And I'm also going to do the dirt finish on it. So that's gonna add another layer of texture. I have also seen people use coffee grounds as well. Well, I think the white is so beautiful. I'm not even sure I wanna put the dirt on, but I'm going to give it a try. Um, if it doesn't turn out, the great thing is you just go over with another coat of paint. So you can always go back and forth until you get the look that you want. It's really interesting how um, the vase just seems to take the dirt more in some spots and not so much in others. And I don't really know why, I guess it's just the varying of texture, but that is what makes it look so natural. I'm gonna let this sit for a little bit. Um, like I said, it is partially wet still. I want it to dry completely. That way I can rub a little harder, get it just perfect before sealing it with the top coat. Although we want a natural rustic stone look, we don't actually want dirt coming off while we're dusting <laughs> So in the house. So that's why we're sealing this, just to make sure that everything stays where we want it to stay. Using the same matte clear that I used on the little pot, um, I love using the matte because you don't want any shine on this. You want it to look rustic. So just using a sweeping back and forth motion 
um, letting go of the nozzle on each end will give you the best distribution. I suppose I could have just done one project today, but I was just so excited about redoing three of these things that I, I just went for it. And I'm so glad that I did. Project number one was this little pot and here's what it looked like before. And the after I just think is stunning. It really does look like old pottery. And I put this beautiful fern in here. I do not know what kind of fern this is. If you know, and you can comment below, I'd appreciate it. My parents brought it to me at Christmas time um, from Trader Joe's, and I've never seen anything like it before, but it's perfect for this little pot. And I think it just looks so aged and rustic, and it was so easy to do and fun. Project number two was this little toolbox and the handle really needed reinforcing and I was able to repair some of the split wood. And now I just think it is darling and I'm really excited to have this on my front porch for the spring. I did a couple of different looks, just some ideas. The first idea was to load the whole thing with plants. I put ivy in and really if I was going to do this long term, I could actually line the box and plant flowers or plants directly in, or I could you know, pack the plants in, surround them with moss, that would work as well. The second look is just kind of using it as a tray with some books and a plant. And this looks really cute on a front porch, on a table. And then look number three is using it with some of my gardening tools some succulents that need to be planted, and seeds. It would be a great carrier for seed packets. And I thought all three of these were really great. If you have a favorite, comment below, let me know which one you would choose. And lastly, project three is the lamp. Now, the lamp really turned out great, I think. I'm very happy with it. And of course, we got this kind of old stone look to it. And I really think it's pretty. The trick for me was choosing a shade. Now, often when I'm shopping for clients, I will go buy three, five, seven shades, bring them all and have the client choose what's best and then take them back. And this is really great because most stores have such excellent return policies these days. It allows for that. You'll notice that these appear kind of shiny. It's because the plastic wrap is still on them. I haven't removed it yet because I'm not sure which one I'm going to choose. But try to imagine the reflection being gone. Now the first shade that I tried, I thought maybe doing something in a beige, kind of a neutral. I noticed on camera when I took this photo, it doesn't look so bad. But in real life, it kind of is a third color, like two different colors on the base and then this different beige on here. So I actually kind of ruled this one out immediately. And I'm going to go with the white and we have two choices. We have a cone shape. And obviously I'm not gonna tighten the piece on top, but you get the idea of what it would look like with a cone shaped shade. And then there is a drum shade. And so I like the color definitely better. I think I might be leaning towards the drum shade. I really would love to know what you think. If you could just comment below and let me know your vote. And if you have a different suggestion, I would love to hear that as well. Thank you so much for joining me today for Flippin' Friday. It was great to do these projects and have you along for the ride. Have an awesome day.